This is everything you need to know before starting a dropshipping store in 2022. With all of the greedy get rich quick kids off to pump and dump their next mutant donkey NFT, dropshipping is in a weird place where competition is a lot lower than it was a couple years ago, which makes it a lot easier for newer dropshippers to enter the space. Now over the past six months, I've been able to successfully scale tons of new dropshippers from zero to one grand a day, like my student Malika who went from zero to 2.2K a day, but I've noticed that one of the biggest issues these new dropshippers face is taking risk. Now with any business, the riskiest thing you can do is to take no risk at all. And if you treat dropshipping like a hobby, you're gonna get hobby results. So you may have to ask yourself some tough questions right now where you might be in school, you might have a job, you might have other businesses, but if you really wanna take this seriously, then you may have to drop all of those other things. Because if you have 10 other things that you are working on, then you're spreading yourself thin. You're gonna only have 10% of yourself that you can dedicate to dropshipping, which is why you're gonna get half-assed results. For me, I had to make the decision not to go to college and go all in with my dropshipping brands. And there was a high chance that if it didn't work, I have no plan B here. I have no safety net. I'll be working at McDonald's. I'll be begging on the street for sandwiches. My parents will disown me, all that great stuff if I don't make this work. And for a lot of people, when you have that safety net, you don't go all in. So if you really put all of your eggs in one basket and you say, man, I cannot fail failure is not an option, then a lot of times that is when you will get the best results. So if you're not getting out of your comfort zone, then you're probably not made to be an entrepreneur. That's just the tough reality because you have to make those tough risks where you're investing all of your money into a mentor or bulk ordering inventory and branding a product that is working for you to get to that next level where you can finally sell your brand, where you can charge more. There's a lot of risks that are involved with this business. And if you're not great with risk management, then again, this is probably not for you. Now, before we get into my next point, I've had a lot of you messaging me about working with your dropshipping brands and even helping you create your first dropshipping store. So I am incredibly excited to announce that my TikTok ad agency is reopening to 15 more clients as I can confidently say that we have dialed in our product testing strategies and have successfully scaled over four new clients in the past month past one grand a day from nothing. And for the next three days, we'll be discounting our price by over 30% and you will get a free coaching call with me. So if you want me to find you winning products, build your store, build your product pages, create your ads and manage your ads until we find a winner for you, all you have to do is click the link in the description and book a call with my team. But make sure to book your call in the next 30 days or you won't get that discounted price. Now what's the proper budget to start a dropshipping store? Because I get a lot of you messaging me saying, Ethan, I only have $100 in my entire bank account. I've worked my entire life for this $100 and I don't want to lose it all. So how do I turn this into a million with TikTok ads or Facebook ads? And I get there's tons of videos on YouTube that's dropshipping with $0, but oh my God, is that propaganda. It's total BS. You cannot start a business with $100 even a thousand there are so many different expenses out there like having employees like product costs like advertising costs like shopify website costs so personally i would recommend at least starting with twenty five hundred dollars or more because if you're starting with less every single dollar really matters and you're going to be making a lot of rash decisions because you don't have a lot of wiggle room there so if you have less than twenty five hundred dollars that limits the amount of mistakes that you can make and boy you're gonna make a lot of them in the beginning whether that's spending too much for a website or spending too much to test a product or investing into a mentor who's been flexing the Lamborghinis and private jets. And you're like, oh my God, this is the person I want to learn from the douchebag. But then you get scammed. So a lot of that stuff is going to happen to you. It's happened to me. It's happened to some of the best people in the game. So if you have less than that, save some money, work a few more hours or do what Gary V would do. And that's going to a garage sale and try to find some items that you can flip or I don't know, make an NFT. It's all about gratitude and hustle and grind. You gotta realize, I wake up at 3 a.m. every single morning to mint a new NFT project. And then after that, I'm at garage sales, just flipping, just totally ripping off old people that don't know the value in their old comic books. But if you want to start dropshipping, that's fine too. And I would recommend the next thing you do is figure out what type of store you want to start, whether that is a one product store or a general store. Now, I personally love one product stores. That's where I made the majority of my money because they are the easiest stores to brand. So if you really want to sell a product successfully, you need to convince your target audience that this is the only place where they can buy it. Otherwise, they're going to price check on Amazon and that's why you're going to have a lot of add to carts, but not a lot of purchases. As an example, I was able to scale this one product store right here. My 
my slim waist by just selling this one waist trainer. And the way I did it is I had a consistent color scheme. I had a beautiful logo. I had urgency. I had a great offer. The copywriting was laser focused because I knew my target audience inside and out. I read those customer reviews. I saw what my competitors were doing and I took the best lines and was able to make an amazing description that converts at four to 5% on cold traffic, which is insane. So you got to keep in mind, this is the standard you want to have if you're testing with a one product store to maximize every single product that you test. And if you're on a tighter budget, then I definitely recommend the one product store route because again, it lets you create a brand around the product and really let it shine. So if it's going to be a winner, it'll rise like cream to the top with the one product store route. Now, if you're incredibly lazy like me, creating a one product store for every single product you test can be very difficult if you're a one man team. So if you want to be testing products constantly so that you can find a winner, because at the end of the day, usually about one in 10 products is going to be successful, then I would recommend the general store route. So if you're great at writing descriptions, this definitely works for you. And here's a quick example with Dovely. You can see they're testing some different eyebrow shapers. They got a toilet cover. I mean, it is just completely jambled and it's very reminiscent of an Amazon or a Target where, yeah, you can find basically anything here. General stores are great for finding winning products because if a product can shine on a general store, you know it will really shine as a one product brand because you're not able to do all the fancy logos and color schemes and all that. They all have an equal chance to blow up. But the way you can really have a product shine the most on a general store and try to make it branded is first, you need to have a branded product name like Golden Way and they have this little trade marks or the restricted whatever you want to call it symbol that makes it look professional then when you scroll down you need to have a template for writing your descriptions you need to have a way of communicating what the main problem is what is your hook why should someone be reading this and what are the benefits for them and right here in the description they have a customer review so social proof that's another integral part to communicating the value of your product because at the end of the day no one wants to be that first guinea pig that tests a product we want to see other people using it it's herd mentality if everyone's using it then we want it too so if we scroll on down we can see the review and again do we have reviews we have faqs this is clearly a professional brand that's doing very well now i will admit they are missing reviews but they do put some customer testimonials in the description to mitigate that and another way of communicating a brand feel with your product is making sure you have good photos and gifts so this brand right here they have the customer picture but they also have a good photo that explains what you're going to get so really, when you're testing products in a general store, make sure you're testing each product the exact same way so that the only variable is the product itself. So if you have a winning formula, all you have to do is just keep testing products in that formula and eventually you're gonna find winner after winner after winner. Now, the next thing you're gonna have to learn to start a dropshipping store is website design, but how do you actually make a good looking website when you really haven't done it before? So let's cover some website fundamentals. Now, the first thing you wanna keep in mind with your website is making sure it's mobile optimized. If you have someone designing your website and you're taking a look on the computer and it looks great, that doesn't really matter because all of your traffic is coming from this device right here. So looking at this website, this is Carbon Merchant. Now the first thing I would change is the logo, super generic. You got uppercase for Carbon, lowercase for Merchant, different colors. It's an absolute mess. Looking at the photos, they got some white background photos, which is totally fine, but oh my God, that product name. Oh. Oh. Pilates, Pilates Bar Kid, why, why would, would you, you be, be so, so generic? generic? I mean, the first thing people are gonna do when they see that is they're gonna open a new tab and look up Pilates Bar Kid and get this product for a lot cheaper somewhere else. You have to have that branded product name. So just off the top of my head, Pilates Pro, trademark. That could be the name of the product and that sounds a lot more branded than Pilates Bar Kit. I do like that they have shop pay because it gives people another option to purchase the item if they don't have the money right now, which is actually pretty good. Now, scrolling down, their add to cart button. It's lifeless, it's transparent in a way. I mean, you don't wanna have your add to cart button have white and then a blue outline. It's so freaking easy to miss. Again, I don't wanna be the guy that's always just bringing up my own websites, but for our client brands, look at this buy now button that we made. This is super hard to miss. It stands out, it's full, and it bounces when you're hovering over it. So that's the first place you want customers to have their eye on that buy now button. And I've also split tested that a lot. So buy now definitely converts better than add to cart if you wanna do that with your buttons. Now, scrolling down, exercise anywhere, anytime, that's a pretty decent benefit. Yeah, with hooks, with those first initial benefits, you wanna keep them short and to the point. So I actually like that. I would just do exercise anywhere, comma, anytime and then have an exclamation. Now scrolling down here, this is actually a pretty good gift showing all the different exercises you can do. Looking at the text itself, I would spread this apart, definitely change the font color from gray to more of a black. 
Again, what I mean by spaced out, like when we work with our clients, you can see after each sentence, we do a space because it's just a lot easier for people to read. Looking at the next benefit, I don't think this is really that bad. Develop a strong core and leaner muscles. That is a benefit. When people are reading this, they're thinking, how does this benefit me? Well, I can get a stronger core and leaner muscles. That sounds good. Now the next thing, a convenient home workout. That's a little bit vanilla. I would say get a convenient wor home workout in only 10 minutes. So that could be the actual benefit. You can get this amazing workout in a fast amount of time. But again, you have to do the customer research to understand what people are looking for. They have some good photos here. So really, it's not the worst website. I would say the branding needs a little bit of help. The reviews here, these are actually pretty detailed looking at them. So overall, I would say they have a lot right, but they could definitely work on a few things here. It looks like they also have a sticky add to cart at the bottom, which is definitely something you want to have. Have. Looking at our next website, free shipping for orders over 50. I think that's a little bit of a vanilla offer. I typically will have some sort of urgency or discount code if I'm going to do a headline offer. So save 10% off when you use discount code SPEED10. That can really incentivize people to complete that purchase, especially when they're on the checkout page and they see, hey, oh my God, there's a discount section, but I don't have a code. I need to look that up. I need to find something to save some money. Looking at their menu, home, shop, contact, track my order, I think is all totally fine with me. I would have an about us if you have that, but it's definitely not mandatory. Now, scrolling down, speeders, interior, ambient, light strips. Not the worst name. I think that it's a little bit of a cop out to do your brand. Looking at the actual different variants. I think this is way too many variants. If you're selling a product, I would limit it to five variants max because option fatigue is definitely a thing. So I would just pick out the five colors that you feel like are gonna be the ones that sell out the most and just exclude all the other ones. Now, USB, that's totally fine with me. Different sizes, that's totally cool. Scrolling down, I think this can definitely be a lot better. Personally, if you wanna have volume discount offers in your product page, gonna go back here for the reference, but I definitely recommend Upsell Funnel Engine. This is what it looks like and it's much more branded than the one that we see right here, which is just a bunch of text. Another headline I don't think is that bad, create a luxury driving experience. Obviously, you wanna do the research. Now, personally, I feel like this is about transformation. So transform your boring car into an all new, beautiful ride. I don't know, something like that. You would have to work it out. I know, personally, when you're writing descriptions, you have to throw out all your ideas and then you eventually refine them. Now, looking at the rest of this, I don't think it's that bad. I wouldn't have emojis though. I noticed that's a little bit cheesy in my eyes. I would get rid of those. But gifts are a great way of selling your product and showing them off. Now, scrolling down, I think they're missing a lot of things. They don't have shipping times. They don't have an order guarantee. And I find from my own experience, you wanna be transparent because if you're putting yourself in your customer's shoes, you obviously wanna know how long does it take to ship? Is there an order guarantee if I don't receive my product or it ends up breaking? So if you wanna become someone that can sell to people, you have to put yourself in your customer's shoes. Now, looking at the reviews, I like the photos. They look very good, but I don't think the words are great. Like excellent quality, that's not selling me. Personally, I prefer more custom reviews. So again, going back to my client here, what we did is we have very detailed reviews that are custom about the product. So this is a styling hair product. So what we did is I have naturally blank hair and this blow dryer helped me dry my hair incredibly fast, which has always been a big problem for me. Overall, the styler saved me so much time and money. So we're talking about all the amazing product benefits. We also mentioned the name of the brand and we talk about how fast shipping is. So hey, this arrived in only eight days and the style jet brush. Those are the three things you wanna convey with your reviews. Product quality is great, fast shipping, and you mentioned the name of the brand. Now reviewing some websites that I absolutely love, I think this brand is amazing. This menu home, then you got the main winning product, which I personally did for my one product store. You got a good logo, track your order, contact us, that's perfect. I love the font they use, and this right here, this is great social proof. Instead of having some cheesy payment processors or whatever fake testimonial crap you wanna have, this is so much better, these different magazines, and they make sense. Of course, a beauty product could be feature on Vogue or Vanity Fair or Glamour. That makes a ton of sense. Now, the way this is laid out, super easy to read. There's a space after pretty much every sentence. And then scrolling down, we've got some great photos, how to use the product, what's included, our guarantee. This is a website that you wanna personally emulate. And the rest of it, they got different ways of comparing it to other products. And that's what you wanna do, because everyone's gonna be thinking in their mind, what is the difference between this product and the other products on the market? Why is this one better? And graphics like that are really good for demonstrating that, but you can also convey that idea in your description. So going back here to the style jet, what we said is that traditional hair curling irons. So the alternative method 
are costly and will damage your hair. So you need to convey the idea that all these alternative methods are not nearly as good as your new method, which is your product, because at the end of the day, People are buying transformation and they want to have the product that provides the transformation in the fastest amount of time for the most affordable cost. Then finally scrolling down, they got some great social proof. Look at these reviews. Oh my God, they have an FAQ. Everything here is perfect. I don't think there's really anything they need to change besides maybe having a sticky ad to cart. I'm sure they have some great email marketing and backend stuff as well, but this is beautiful. Now getting into some essential apps that you're gonna need to really build the website of your dreams. The first one I recommend is abandonment protector because if you're driving traffic and you are spending that moolah to get people to view your product, you have to be following up with them. A lot of times people need to see that product seven times on average to make the decision. So obviously you wanna have email and SMS flow that are following up with people that have added to cart. They've shown the interest, but there was just something that was holding them back. So again, the first off, you just wanna remind them, hey, here's a quick link back to your cart. But if their main reason for not buying was let's say the price, it was a little too expensive, then follow up with them again by giving them a discount code. It can be 10% off, it could be 15% off, but you wanna be giving discount codes because that is a very common reason as to why people will abandon cart. Then obviously you need social proof, so I recommend Luke's for photo reviews. It's an amazing app for all of that. Then Oberlo is great for importing products. Pagefly is for building custom product pages like the one I showed you. And if you want a full tutorial on how to use that, I do have a two hour tutorial that literally breaks down every single thing you need to know. SMS bump is for doing those text message follow-ups. So if someone does add to cart, you're sending them text as well. Finally, UFE, we already talked about, this is what it looks like on a product page. It's just doing those bundle deals on the product page so people are more likely to buy two or three of your products instead of one. And then the final thing I recommend, if you're a beginner, is ultimate sticky add to cart because you do not wanna give people any freaking reason why they can't go to that next step. So if they're reading your reviews and they're like, oh my God, I gotta scroll all the way back up to the top of the description to click the buy now button, it might be the reason why they are not going to that next step. People are so freaking lazy and you have to make it incredibly easy to go to that next step. So eliminate all the friction, have the sticky ad to cart where they can click it from anywhere on the product page to go to that next step. Now in business and especially dropshipping, if you do not know your numbers, you cannot scale profitably. So I highly recommend one of the most important apps is B profit. I use this on all of my stores to calculate where I'm getting the best return on my money. So just looking at this right here for this one brand, you can see that I made $31,000 in net profit. And how this app works is you tell it how much your product will cost you, and then it will calculate the transaction fees. It calculates shipping based on what you told it the product cost and shipping was. And what you can do is connect different ad accounts like TikTok, Google, Facebook, really whatever platform you use, you can connect on here. And if we scroll on down, you can see where my ad spend has been. So obviously I'm a TikTok guy, so $35,000 has been spent there. I had some money on Facebook, on Snapchat. And B Profit gives you custom reports like this one right here. So you can see by platform how much you're spending. You can get daily reports and this is so so freaking helpful when you're scaling your brand because again if you don't know your numbers you're basically like a person who's blindfolded throwing pins at a dartboard and you're just hoping that you make the right decision to profitability but when you know your numbers inside and out this is how you scale brands to six and seven figures and all of these smart business owners are doing the proper number tracking. And this is also great for tax season. So you send this to your accountant. This is so much easier to track everything because you have all of your numbers in one place. Because I know at the end of the month, you're probably saying, okay, I only have my advertising costs and cost of goods. But looking at the chart right here, hey, transaction fees, refunds, taxes, you have to account all of these different things. And if you're not, you might think you're profitable, but then when you check your bank account, you end up being broke. So if you wanna track all your numbers during tax season and grow your dropshipping brands predictably, you can download B Profit and save money when you click the link in my description to get it. Now, the next thing you have to define when you're getting into dropshipping is what your criteria is gonna be for evaluating products that you wanna test. Now, I have a 75 page ebook that you can get for free in the description down below if you want my nine key factors, and I'd highly recommend checking it out, but I'm gonna give you the three most important ones that I look for in the most. 
Now, the first thing, as you can see on my screen, is that a winning product either solves a problem or creates a desire. Now, if you're a beginner, I think it's a lot easier to sell problem-solving products because it's easy to explain why people will need it. Compared to with a shirt, you really have to explain the feeling that the product conveys. Now, on my ebook, one of the first things I look for is that the product either solves a problem for a specific target audience or creates a desire for a specific target audience. So, for this shirt right here, if I was to sell this cool little Monaco Yacht Club, I understand it's going to be for guys, it's going to be for young younger guys that want to convey that they are well-dressed, that they are responsible, that they have a certain luxury feel to them. So really, you're communicating a lifestyle at the end of the day when you're selling those non-problem solvers. But if you're a beginner, I would recommend problem solving products because it's so easy to convey, hey, here's the problem that you have and here's how my product solves it. Looking at my brand right here, the main reason why I was able to sell so many waist trainers is because I laid out the problem immediately. I said, exercise in the right diet isn't enough to change your body into the dream hourglass you deserve. So my target audience, it's women that wanna lose weight. They wanna look snatched, they wanna look good. They wanna be out in the club and have guys hitting on them, but they're doing these other things, these alternative methods, exercising and dieting, but it's not working. So when you're selling a problem solving product, you can mention the problem that they're having and why it's not getting them results. Then you can transition into why your product gives them the results they're looking for. So it's a lot easier to sell these problem solving products, but I would also recommend looking for products that have validation. Now validation can be if you find a supplier for your product that has at least 500 orders so that you know there's some market demand because you don't wanna be selling products that don't have a clear market demand. So a good way of finding some validation is going onto AliExpress and finding different suppliers that have at least 500 to 5,000 orders for your product. If it's more than 30,000, I would say that's a little too saturated for me and I'll avoid testing that. Now, when it comes to evaluating the validation on ads, let's take a look at this ad right here. The engagement is 3,000 likes and eight shares. Now, to you, is that a good amount of validation? Now, you might be saying, yeah, there's thousands of likes, so clearly people like it. But in my opinion, I think likes are easily bought. They're not a great way of evaluating whether or not it's a product that's in demand. And when I see there's eight shares to 3,000 likes, that tells me this product's not that great. And when you compare it with this ad right here, there's about 1,300 likes and 168 shares. It's a lot more balanced. It's about a one in nine ratio. And personally, when I'm looking at ads for these products that I wanna sell, I like to see a ratio that is one in 30 or lower. So the closer it is to one to one, the better. That's how you know this is real. These are real shares. Shares are a much better indication of validation than likes, which can easily be bought. And the final thing to keep in mind is selling products with a high perceived value. So I recommend at least a $20 margin and two and a half X the supplier cost. Because if you're selling a product that's $80 and you're like, well, Ethan said it's just a $20 margin. So if I sell it for a hundred, that's good. No. That's not what I mean. If it's an $80 product, it needs to be sold for $200 so that you can have some wiggle room for your advertisements because your ads will fluctuate. You'll have some good days and you'll have some bad days. So if you have a great margin, if you are at least 5X your supplier cost, like in this instance, this gold chain, I can guarantee costs five bucks, but you can sell this for 40, which is 8X more than their supplier fee. So this gives them much more wiggle room to play around with different ad ideas and see what's working the best. Now I have a whole video dedicated to how to make high converting ads for TikTok, which I would recommend watching by the way, but when you are new to dropshipping or you're creating your new dropshipping stores, you have to pick a platform that you're gonna master, whether that's TikTok, Facebook, influencers, they all work at the end of the day, they're all super powerful. So pick the one that you like the most. Now, when it comes to advertising and making a good ad, the fundamentals are pretty much the same for each platform. You wanna have an ad that follows a good framework like a hook, demo, social proof, and call to action. That is the most profitable framework for me. And if you can, you wanna have your clips be UGC. So user generated content that's natural, it's people using your product, having a good time. It doesn't feel super branded and commercial because those ads just don't convert very well. Now, when it comes to hook, this is gonna be the first three seconds of your ad and it's the most important thing. This is what you wanna split test the most. It is the opening benefit or the question or however you're going to grab someone's attention to watch the rest of your ad. So I'll show one of my ads for the waist trainer, but what I did is I started out with the main benefit. So I said, do you wanna lose two to four inches off your waist or lose two to four inches off your waist in only 30 days? That is something that grabs my target audience's attention because I did the research and I know what is the main benefit that they want. 
Now, after I got their attention, the next thing I need to do is show the product and how it works. So demonstration, this is where you have a few clips, two, three, four clips that are only a couple seconds long that showcase your product in action and how it is applicable to the person you're selling to. Then you wanna have some social proof. People need to see other people using it. So I would recommend either having different influencers talking about how amazing the product is, or you can just show different reviews flashing on screen of everyone that loves the product. You just need to communicate that, hey, this product does work and we have a lot of people that can back it up. And then finally, you need to tell these sheep what to do because if you don't, they're just gonna keep on watching their TikToks or their Facebook or wherever you're advertising to. So have a call to action that is clear and I would highly recommend putting the URL of your website in the ad so that if people save the ad or they just keep it for a little later, they know where to visit to buy your product. Now there's a ton of other things that go into making a winning ad. So again, check out that freaking video if you don't know how to advertise. Now if you suck at editing ads or just finding clips online in general for your product, I would recommend just going to the experts like viral ecom ads. I've been using them for years and I've scaled multiple brands past six figures with the creatives that they've made for me. So if you're not the best at this and if you don't have the time to make these ads because it does take hours just to make one ad, then just go with them because they can find all the best clips, they can edit it and make your ads highly engaging and figure out what the best benefits are to capture your target audience's attention. You can also save 20% off with my discount code, link in description. Now this may be the most important thing and I know you're gonna absolutely hate it, but you need to invest into a mentor or a course that can give you information in a chronological order that explains how dropshipping works and how you can be successful. Because when you start out dropshipping, you don't know what you don't know because you've never done it before. I mean, how could you possibly go on YouTube and find out all the information when you literally don't know what problems you're gonna face? So I'd recommend learning from people that are at the stage in life that you wanna be at. And if they do have a mentorship program, pay whatever it is because you're paying for their expertise and they can save you so much time and money, especially money that you're gonna waste trying to learn all this stuff on your own. And I know from my own experience, I spent six months of my life trying to figure this stuff out with YouTube videos and I was so freaking stubborn and I lost $3,000. And it was until I invested into a mentor that I finally broke out and found my first winning product. And if you don't have thousands of dollars for a mentor, I get it. So personally, I would recommend going the course route. I have my own course that I sell for $75, which is absolutely nothing, guys. If you can't afford this, you shouldn't be starting a dropshipping business. And this gives out my best lessons. I charge $3,000 for this, but I did not want to make my money this way with knowledge. So if you really want a course that can teach you everything you need, I would highly recommend just getting this and learning every single fundamental. Because at the end of the day, the premium resources and information that you can learn in courses are just not gonna be shared on YouTube for free. Because I know even in these videos that are super detailed, I'm holding a lot of stuff back. Now, when you are making sales, the next thing you have to worry about is getting a private supplier. Now, personally, my best private suppliers have always been people that have been referred to me from other dropshippers that are making a ton of sales. So this is where I would recommend joining some mentorships so you can get access to these amazing suppliers instead of having to find someone on your own. But if you have absolutely no network, here's the best way you can find some good suppliers. Now, the first place you can find a sourcing agent is from Upwork. And again, these are great for lowering your shipping time from two to three weeks or two to four weeks to one to two weeks or only five days from China to America, which is possible through the fastest shipping line. Now, the reason why you wanna have a private sourcing agent is because they lower your shipping times, they lower your product costs, and you can brand your product. Now, that's a whole discussion for another day because you have to have certain files and you have to have a lot of negotiation and you have to a lot of times bulk order if you wanna have white labeled, you have to. So when you are negotiating with these different suppliers, the reality is when you're fulfilling on AliExpress and a lot of times CJ dropshipping, you're not talking to the manufacturer of your product. This product right here might be a dollar out of the manufacturer. And then a lot of times you'll have some smart Chinese businessmen that will buy the product and then sell it for four to five X that fee. So they'll charge four or $5 in AliExpress. And we're like, wow, that's really cheap. I could sell it for 25 but you can dramatically lower your product cost by cutting out the middleman, going straight to the supplier, which a lot of times these sourcing agents can do for you. And really the whole job of the sourcing agent is to lower those product costs and get you faster shipping lines. And if they can't do that, then they're not a good sourcing agent. You should not be working with them. So again, here on Upwork, we can see a ton of different people here. I would definitely filter them by 90% job success. I would go with people that have at least a $1,000 earned amount. And really what you wanna do when you're reaching out to them is you send them a link to your product. You say, hey, how fast can you source this product? What are the shipping times like? And what are the costs 
of getting this product. And you really wanna build a list of these agents so you can find the best one for you. So I'd also recommend going on Alibaba and contacting all of the main suppliers that are making the product that you wanna sell. So if we're selling this massage gun, we would reach out to all of these different suppliers. And again, if you want scripts, I do have some in my own course. If you wanna check that out again, it's only 75 bucks but you really wanna build a different list, keep on messaging all these different people and finding out what's the best deal. And the real bonus of doing all this is if you don't wanna move on from your current supplier, you can say, hey buddy, you're charging me $5 and this person on Alibaba is charging me $3. So I will move if you don't lower the price. So that's a great way of doing it. You wanna price match all of the time so that you keep on lowering those cost of goods. Now I wouldn't be pestering your agent every single day about this, but usually once a month, it's good to just price match and say, hey, I'm getting a better price over here. Can we lower the cost? And they will be accommodating, especially if you are bringing out sales. And I know I've had a lot of instances where I was selling a necklace that cost me $7 and my agent was able to drop that down to $2 and get me faster shipping. So it is definitely worthwhile once you have a product that's making you sales to go out and reach out to some private suppliers. And the final thing you wanna keep in mind is just be realistic. At the end of the day, when you're learning a whole new business model, it could take you six months, it could take you a year. And I get it, when you're on YouTube, you are just seeing the best of the best. And it's really hard not to fall in the trap to compare yourself to their journeys. And I know for me, when I was at the six month mark and I saw all these people who took six months and were already at a million a month in sales, I was like, what the hell is wrong with me? What am I doing that isn't getting me results? But the reality is some people just get lucky. They test a product and it hits off immediately and boom, they got all these results and they're an expert when really they had the same amount of knowledge as you. So if you want to get results, you have to be testing products efficiently and at a high quality level, which is why I love my agency because that's exactly what we do. But if you're on your own, you have to keep these things in mind because usually again, one in 10 products is gonna work out for you. So if you keep on plugging away and learning each and every day how to improve your skills of copywriting, advertising, and finding winning products, you will eventually find that winning product that changes your life.